So do you ever feel bogged down by the sheer amount of exercises and information that you can learn online? Do you ever feel like there are just way too many licks and patterns and voicings to actually integrate into your playing and wonder, what do I actually do with this stuff? Well, if you do, you are far from alone. In fact, many of my students ask me questions about this subject all the time. What do I actually do with this stuff? How do I know what to practice? And how can I truly, truly make sure that this is actually providing some kind of value to my playing? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna do my best to answer all those questions so that you never have to wonder what to do with this information that you find online ever again. After watching this video, you should be able to take information from online videos, lessons, etc., and directly apply it to your playing with a really effective system. So let's get into it. And of course, if you're new to the channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos just like this one. And also, if you already know my content, please smash that like button, it really, really helps me out. Oh, and if you want a bunch of free resources, licks, tips, tricks, sheet music, etc., to check out, click the link in the description and join the free resources library. It's really, really awesome, very fun, and there's tons of information in there. All right, let's dive into this video. So really, really simple question. Let's say we hypothetically stumble upon a YouTube video about some sick modern licks or maybe some really useful solo piano arpeggios. Not that I know anybody who would ever make a video about something like that. But let's just say hypothetically you do stumble upon something like that. Some really basic questions you're probably gonna have are, Number one, is it worth my time to learn these licks? And number two, if I do learn them, what do I do with them? Because it's not just gonna magically translate into your playing. If you actually show up and start playing with a band, it may be that there's quite a space between you learning it in the practice room and actually having it just come out on the bandstand. So I wanna answer those questions and give you some really great, very tangible strategies that you can use to bridge that gap so that you go, do go directly from the practice room to the bandstand and you actually achieve that level of comfort that this vocabulary that you're finding in all these different various places online can actually translate directly into your improvisation. So let's start by answering the first question. And by the way, I am going to get into some really, really excellent strategies later in the video. So make sure that you listen all the way through, but we're gonna build on this. So the first question is, is this worth my time? Should I actually learn it? I think there are actually a couple considerations here. So when you see a video that grabs your interest, so let's take our example of five sick modern licks, something like that. I think you should ask yourself a couple questions, right? Number one, do I like how this sounds? If you don't like how it sounds, that right there, shut the door. You don't need to learn something that you don't actually like, unless you have a very specific goal in mind with learning that thing. So let's say you hear the lick and you think, hmm, you know, I've never practiced anything like that. I think it'd be really great for my technique. Go for it. If you think, you know, I think it would really open up my ears. Sure, maybe it's worth going for it. But if you hear it and you think, I don't really like how that sounds and I'm not sure that I want to play that way, then turn it off. Don't, don't watch that video, right? You don't need to learn things just because somebody else thinks you should or just because somebody else implies that it's a cool thing to learn. And maybe to some of you that's very, very obvious, but to me, as a musician growing up and studying, that wasn't actually always an obvious answer to me. In fact, I think I learned a lot of things just because I thought I should. And frankly, um, while there might have been some benefits to learning those things, they haven't showed up in my playing at all because I didn't really want to internalize them. To some degree, those things were much more of a waste of time to learn than the things I actually liked the sound of. So that's an easy answer. If you don't like it, it doesn't inspire you, why even learn it? I think another question you could just ask yourself very quickly, right? Don't go too deep into this, but what's the opportunity cost of learning this thing and what are my current goals? So when I say opportunity cost, right, that might be the time you spend learning this lick is taking time away and also mental energy away from something else you may be working on. So if your goal right now, your primary goal, you sit down the practice and you think, you know what? I really want to improve my uh, voicing vocabulary. If that's your primary goal and you sit down and a video pops up and it's all about cool modern licks, well, maybe the best use of your time would instead be to focus on voicing vocabulary. Maybe save that video for later if you wanna watch it, but sit down and focus on your 
set goal for that period of time. Don't let yourself just go around picking at random vocabulary. It's not gonna be inspiring, it's gonna be unfocused, and I don't think it's gonna help you out in the long run. So, once you decide that you do want to work on this piece of vocabulary, it sounds great to you, you think it's gonna help your technique, etc., and it fits maybe your goals with what you wanna to do to improve, how do you actually then bridge that gap and take it from the practice room to the bandstand. Well, I've been working on this for many, many years, and I've also been working on different methods with various different students, so I think I have some pretty decent answers. But if you either disagree or have some other suggestions, please let all of us know in the comments. I love having my videos be a great forum for everybody to share information because everybody learns differently, and I'm sure many of you have awesome techniques that you use as well. But I'm gonna show you my vocabulary integration routine right now. All right, so let's take a lick as an example here. All right, so this is just a little lick over a two, five, one in the key of F. So the very first thing that I would do for true vocabulary internalization here would not be to sit down and learn to play it. In fact, it would actually be to use my brain to visualize it and make sure that I can actually hear the lick in my mind. When I close my eyes and visualize it, I'm actually going to visualize a couple things. Number one, where are my fingers hitting? What is my fingering for this lick? What does it look like on the keys of the piano as my hand moves? And most importantly, of course, what do the notes sound like? So if I close my mind and I get stuck and I'm actually not hearing one of the notes, I'm gonna go back and make sure I hear that interval. So for example, I'm gonna play the chord in my left hand. And so let's say I'm singing this in my head, but I'll sing it out loud here. And let's say I get lost on this fourth note. Okay, I can't get it, right? So I'm gonna to go to the piano now and I'm going to just kind of figure out those notes. Cool, I got that. Now I'm gonna keep going. Of course I chose a two octave arpeggiated lick instead of just something a little bit more linear here, but that's okay, we'll roll with it. A great thing you can do is sing the note first and then check it on the piano. So, Apologies, by the way, for listening to this incredibly beautiful singing that I'm doing here. Okay, so I've got it in my ear. I can sing those notes one at a time like that. I've got it down. By the way, remember, you do this with any lick or piece of vocabulary you're trying to get into your ear, because it's way too easy to learn it in your fingers and not really internalize it. That's what so many of us do all the time, and then it doesn't come out in our playing. So once you've got that note by note, the next question is, can you sing the whole lick in your mind and actually land properly at the right place? So let's try this. I'm gonna do just the upper lick. Okay, cool. More or less got it. And now let's see if I can get the next part. Cool, so I got that. D flat there, da, da, to the C. All right, so now let's do the whole thing. Cool, got it. So, cool thing about this, by the way, little side note, of course you can actually practice this in your head away from the piano. So if you're in the car or you're heading somewhere or you're at work, whatever, you can actually be practicing this in your mind. And if you get a little keyboard app on your phone, you can always check yourself against the notes. This totally counts towards that 10,000 hours of practice that you need to be a master, right? 
So keep that in mind. Okay, so once you can do that, step one of integration is complete, right? That is already setting you up to internalize this extremely effectively because you didn't just get it in your fingers, you actually forced your brain to do the work and connect the sounds to what's happening on the piano. That is the step that can be a bit tedious, but is really going to affect your overall internalization and the speed at which you are able to integrate this vocabulary into your playing. Now again, let's say we've mastered it up to this point. Now we need to ask ourselves the question, how can we make this challenging again? Because we're not done here with this vocabulary. So the next question is, how easily can you translate this into other keys? Number one, I can see that we're actually starting on the 11 of this two chord, or number four of the scale, right? So G minor, one, two, three, four. Um, okay, so if we're going to do this, now can we do this in another key? So let's just take a random two, five, one. How about a two, five, one in the key of A major? Okay, so we're gonna start on the four of the two scale. So E. So to know that we've mastered this transposition step, we should be able to do that pretty quickly, right? And I actually would recommend trying random keys in random orders, because that can be a really great way to force your brain to think. And then, Again, we can change up the challenge by saying, okay, now we're gonna do a pattern. So we could just do the lick constantly up in half steps. So we could start in our original. And so on. Okay, at this point you are well on your way to integrating this lick, but this next step, in my opinion, is really, really important and that is the ability to use the lick in different contexts, maybe even over different chords. So what I like to do is take a song that I know really, really well. You wanna take something that you know so well that it's second nature to you. So let's take the chords to a tune that many of us here will know, All the Things You Are. Okay, very uh, cyclical, very much going through the circle of fifths. So if we're going to start a lick here, our first chord is F minor. So we can start on a B flat, right? Number four or in the chord 11. Now, normally what we would do is right, move up a half step here for the B flat seven. But in this case, we actually don't have a B flat seven as the chord. We actually have a B flat minor here, right? So that's not really going to work. Very dissonant. So let's see if we can make this work. Now these rules are not hard and fast. I want you to use your ears and your knowledge of the scales and notes that work with each chord and see if you can essentially mold the lick to work as the chords move by. So this is a nice, fun, tricky process, and you actually could practice this for quite a while just making this work. For me, this is so important because this is the process of taking your ears and taking a lick that you've internalized in one very specific context and now making it usable and useful in all these different contexts as the chords go by. Another variation you can do on this is actually start the lick in a different place rhythmically. So instead of starting right on one, maybe we start on the end of one. And so that already adds a little extra cog that messes up your brain a little bit in a good way and gives you a little extra challenge. The more little challenges like this or little uh, switch ups in the formula you can do that will make it trickier for you, the better you're going to internalize this and the faster. Now in my video about things I wish I knew about practicing many, many years ago, 
One of the things I talk about is staggered repetition. When you're internalizing vocabulary like this, that is one of the greatest tips I can give you. Don't just sit down one day for two hours and then expect it to come out. If you want to get this as fast as possible, practice it five times day one, four times day two, three times day three, two times day four, and then one more time on day five. And by then, if you go through these exercises and you continually keep working on memorizing and making your mind work in different ways, you're going to take this lick and this skill of integrating it and put it into your long-term memory much more quickly. Now, the final step here for me is actually practicing letting it flow in improvisation. So now you're not restricting yourself really in any way. I want you to actually potentially even turn on a play along of some kind um, for a song and improvise along with the song, but try to use that vocabulary. So force your brain to try to incorporate it. So let's just give it a shot here. And so as you practice this process and continue to challenge yourself, you should become more and more comfortable with that bit of vocabulary. This applies not just to a lick, but also a voicing. You can do similar exercises, singing up the notes of the voicing for the uh, ear training portion. You can then also practice applying that voicing and adjusting notes throughout a song, and then just taking it into the full context of a tune. By the way, if you do want to learn more about voicing specific uh, vocabulary integration, I do actually have a video on that, which I will be sure to link right up there. All right, that is it for this process for this video. I hope it really illuminates a process that you can use to actually integrate information and know what to do with it when you see it in a video online or in a book or wherever. If you learned something useful in this video, please hit that like button. It really, really helps me and the channel out. Make sure you join the free resources library for more where this came from. Lots of amazing videos and exercises in there for you to check out. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button if you don't wanna miss any more useful lessons like this one. All right, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.